Welcome everybody to the uh, Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024, Porter County Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, Commissioner um, uh, Blaney is under the weather um, this morning. She will not be with us. Uh, we'll start with the uh, consent agenda. Approval of payroll, April 12th, 2024. Approval of claims, April 4th, April 11th, and April 18th, 2024. Approval of minutes for April 2nd, 2024. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Um, Barb, uh, Health First Initiative update. Do we have somebody? I didn't see you sitting back there. No, we're usually closer. <laughs> we need exercise today. How are you ladies today? I'm doing great. How are you? Good so far, but it's still early. Oh. <laughs> well, hopefully this will be even better. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Exactly. <laughs> Start anytime you'd like. Um, so I first of all just wanted to make a note that when we went to post our annual report on our website, we realized that there was not a landing page for that. So we have a ticket in for that right now so that we can get an annual report uh, landing page. And then on there, we will put not only 2023s, but also the historical reports that we have so that people can have access to those. Uh, in the meantime, Dr. Stamp had had an idea yesterday with all of the um, individuals going by for early voting that we should have a table outside our office, similar to what Veterans has. And so we have that out there now, and there are copies of our annual report which are free for people to look at, take with them, along with lots of education um, and resource material. And there's a, a poster board out there, a display board about Health First Indiana and just kind of other services that we offer. So just wanted to point that out. Jess um, got that done right away yesterday. And so it's, it's looking pretty good and lots of stuff out there. And uh, then we can point people to the counter if they have other questions they want to know more about anything. So... Um, I also wanted to make a note about um, our annual report. We actually had a master's of public health student from Purdue University this past semester. Her name is Allie, and she actually worked to put that together for us. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about our intern. She has worked with us on a Talk Healthy Tuesday blog that's been on our social media, and it will continue for several weeks past when she's gone this week. Uh, she also has been working with the Tobacco Coalition to do some parent survey information about how much parents know about vaping and how much parents know that their kids know about vaping, kind of working with the Tobacco Coalition on that. And she also worked with us on this and other initiatives that we've had for our health fair and things like that. Prior to that, we had a student from um, Grand Canyon University in the fall. And then we have someone coming to us from DePaul this summer who's actually a bachelor's student in global health, and she's going to be working with us largely with Find Help and getting those resources added and people to claim their pages. Um, but she also will be out in the community doing some initiatives too. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. It's exciting. Uh, we have a lot of students who contact us and really want to get involved and work with us, and it's, it's really great. It's really great to see that. So... Um, with our health fair update, I don't remember where we were at last time we were here, um, but we do have our health fair on Friday, June the 14th. We have over 40 vendors who are committed, and we're getting to the point where when we go places, people are asking us about it. So that's good because information is getting out. Uh, we have sent to all of our vendors and asked them to put it out in social media in their offices. We've you know gone around town and asked people to post things. We have sponsorships for the various screenings, backpacks and supplies. We're going to give some away. Uh, we hope to have 500 backpacks full of school supplies. Uh, what we're doing is we're giving people a map when they come and we're giving them a list of booths that we would like them to visit. And then they can also choose two additional booths. And then they'll bring those and claim the backpacks. Um, that way it's not just a mad rush. They're getting to enjoy the fair as well and the screenings and things like that. We have someone sponsoring the DJ, a photo booth, face painting. There are going to be some Star Wars characters around. So lots of things for all ages. So we are very, very excited. Uh, I believe most of our board members are also coming. And of course, everyone's invited. So we just want to make sure that everybody knows. And we'd love to see everybody over there. So... You know, if you have any questions, um, we had some promotional videos um, made, produced, and those are up. The finals are actually went up on our website yesterday. So um, there's a section at the bottom for media and then one for events. And so those can be found in there, and we will be using those to promote the health department, Health First Indiana, the Find Help button, and our community partners. 
and there was like a foods and environmental, like a regulatory, so just a, a wide variety of those promotional videos that we're gonna be using to let everybody know about all the services we provide. Um, public health vending machines is one of the things that we had in our Health First Indiana budget. We have received a quote and we would like to put two vending machines out into the community this year. So we're thinking one in Valparaiso to start with, one in Portage. We're working with some locations um, to get approval from their boards. And then from there, if they see the success that we're hoping that they're going to um, with harm reduction, hygiene supplies, things like that, then of course, in further years will go into other areas, other municipalities around the county. And how will those work? So they can work in some different ways. And so those are discussions that we're having with the board right now to make the best decision. So you can register every user and they have a dedicated number and then you can set the machine however you want. So you can set it that each user can get one of each thing a week or you, you can set whatever kinds of limits that you want. Or you can have a hybrid where people have individual numbers, and then there's also a general code to use so that anybody who comes upon them and needs something could use it. And then you can set limitations specifically on that code. So we're trying to talk through that and figure out what's gonna be the best, because of course we realize we want everybody to have what they need, but we don't want it to be taken advantage of. And what, what type of uh items will be sure. so a variety of things and we've even talked about some se um, seasonal things for example maybe in the summer sunscreen needs to be in there um, and maybe all year round I guess anytime it's sunny but socks we've talked about band-aids um, triple antibiotic ointment um, hand sanitizer other type tampon sanitary napkins other types of first aid supplies soap and where would it actually be located? So that is one of the things that we are working with. So we contacted the library to see if they would be interested, but of course it requires approval for them to house it there as well. So that's something that we're working with them to see if that would be a possibility. That that was kind of our first thought here in Valparaiso. Um, and we talked with the Portage YMCA up there. So same thing. Um, they're working with their board to see if that's something that they would be able to or be willing to have in house there and things. And who would be responsible for stocking it? Who would be responsible for monitoring it and measuring? You know, the, because obviously sure. some items are going to be probably more successful than others. And if because one of my concerns would be people are just they, they get free stuff, they take it and they go sell it. And they just take yeah. money for drugs or yeah. Those are all things that we've talked about as well, and that's where setting that limit comes in. And I've talked to the company a couple times, and um, she's talked to me about different things that many different municipalities do and kind of how they handle that. And so we have a lot of options to choose from. Um, but as far as your question about stocking it, that is all cloud based, and we can see that in real time. So we can see how much of each thing is being used or is being vended at any point in time, and then we would most likely work on an MOU with wherever we're housing it out where we would supply the, the things that go in there, but then they would restock it is kind of what we are thinking. And of course, we have a certain amount of money budgeted. So when that's out, if you know people have been, then, mm -hmm. then it would be out of those things. Uh, explain to me again how, hmm? if, if, I were, if I wanted to use, get something out of the machine, what would I have, what would I have to have in order to have access to anything, any item in there? A code. So we so either I, can- I get the code. People do it in different ways. So we either could register you and that we would have to put a sign up to let people know if they wanted to register for a code, then this is where they would go to register. Or this is what they would fill out. Um, but we also, some places just put a general code up and it's actually posted on the machine. And so anybody could walk up and use the code. Well, Carrie, I have, I have a, I guess I'm kind of perplexed here. Sure. That if you, you're going to put it up at the YMCA, and I know the YMCA membership there isn't free. So if I can afford a membership at the YMCA, <coughs> why am I looking to get banned for nothing? What, I mean, uh, you know, and I'm just, yeah. and, and, and don't, please don't take this. No, not think, at all. I think that since you've come into the position, you've done a wonderful job. But I'm really getting concerned about the monies that have come into county government at the beginning of the year because of uh, SB4. 
we're talking about bicycles, haircuts, and now vending machines. And those vending machines are, they got to be thousands of dollars a piece. Yes, it is, is $12,000 for a I, And I just, you know, and I, please don't take this the wrong way. Bicycles, vending, vending machines, and haircuts. Is that the best that we can come up with for this, the use of this money? I mean, those are definitely not all the things that we're doing. Um, we did look at the YMCA um, for the location because they do actually um, have services for the homeless population at that location. And so that was somewhere where we saw that they, the location is easy to get to from different places um, and where people know that they can go um, for assistance. And so that's why we chose there, but that is not set in stone. We absolutely can look at other locations. Um, as far as the bicycle program, again, we are looking at other things to have to do with transportation. Transportation was one of the things that was identified as a need. Um, the bicycle program was not something that we had on the list today, but we do have a family that we have helped um, and we do check in with them and they are using their bicycle to go to work. I mean, they're using it to meet their need and their um, errands and things I like that. that. But we're the health department. Mm -hmm. It is not our responsibility to help somebody with transportation to work. We'll go broke doing that. I'm just, you know, I, I, it was my understanding that this money that was allocated for the state of Indiana was supposed to, use, to be used directly for health-related issues. And I think that's a far stretch, get, handing out bicycles so some people can get to work. Well, Commissioner Biggs, this is more than just, we're talking about public health. Health-related issues, working on, you know, high blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease and those kind of things, of course. Public health involves everything that would allow us to stay healthy and flourishing. It involves community. It involves prevention. It involves being able to support yourself to be able to remain healthy and to um, supply insurance so that you can get your health care and all those things. This is a, it is, it is, public health is a broad um, uh, uh, perspective. Back uh, to the, back to the vending machine. So <laughs> we are, um, with this, we are focusing on people who are experiencing homelessness or who are experiencing um, addiction those kind of things, uh, and we're trying to keep the, we are able to choose what goes into any vending machine. And that's, those are discussions that we've had with the board, um, and you know how extensive do we make these uh, options for what people can choose out of a vending machine, what we supply it with. Um, we're trying to place them in areas that are easy to access. For instance, I, I think the, um, the Portage Recovery people have been at these meetings and have been at our meetings and they have a nice program. It's where they're located is not particularly accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanna keep it in some place that is, uh, is accessible and um, where people who may be seeking other services be able to access it. So like the Porter County Library in Valparaiso is one of those places that could be very helpful along those lines. Um, you know, the host organization in Valparaiso um, for homeless services uh, also, you know, where they operate um, and have their dinners, for instance, that was a place that we considered. Uh, so we are, um, you know, this isn't a perfect solution, but to be able to access hygiene items um, and uh, harm reduction items like naloxone is one of the things that Carrie um, hadn't gotten to. She has it on her list, the things that are it's the potential. Pin. Um, no, that um, Epi is a pen. Naloxone is a nasal spray, um, the reversal for uh, opioid overdose. Right. Um, so those are, we like to have the supplies and the ability for the 
people who need them to be able to access them. We can have them in our cupboard all day, right? As we have already kind of established, but if people aren't coming up to our front desk at the health department and saying, you know, I, I really need some diapers because I can't afford them, then we can't get them to those people. We need to go to where the people are so that they can have access to these things. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I, I don't have any issue with the items. Mm -hmm. is, is, is the implementation how you plan on getting that information? I don't, I don't, I don't know if that, uh, first of all, I, I see a, a bunch of problems with vandalism because you, 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 you're talking about these these uh, what, the, the anox naloxone yes mm -hmm. and the, and the pens uh, you know if you need one you're, you're maybe you need four or five at the same time I don't you know I, I just I just think that having and, you know talk to anybody that owns a vending machine how often they get they get vandalized or abused and and I think that you know utilizing organizations getting that material to organizations um, that that help or cater to the people that are in need. I think it's a mar much smarter way and less expensive way to do, you know, to get that those items to them instead of having them track across town to maybe the library or to the or to the uh, YMCA uh, to get them. I mean. <coughs> You've got the trustees offices, maybe they have some ideas of, of where you, we can leave those and get them to people and, and have them here as well as you, and I'm, and I'm sure that they, and I'm sure that they are not coming down here and asking for them. And that's my point with this. If you, unless we want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for vending machines and placing them all over this county, having a couple is not going to solve the problem. And, and I and also think that you're inviting issues with those because of the items that are, that are being sought after that are in these vending machines that are, what, 10000 a piece? They got to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just ask that you rethink that and maybe, you know, talk to the organizations that are seeing these people, that are treating these people, and get, this, get, get these items to them. Yeah, I wrote that. Well, we are in contact with numerous myriad organizations around Porter County, too. And we're happy to talk to them about helping to supply their cabinets also, their cabinets for need. Um, I'd just like you, please, to think about the fact that there are people who are not going to darken the door of someplace where they have to talk to somebody right now. So the vending machines can fill a need in our current society where people don't want to meet face to face, um, at least initially. I, I, and we'll, I and nothing, I nothing that we're doing is- There's right now that's servicing vending machines. We don't employ anybody to stock vending machines or service vending machines. So the mere, mere fact that if we, we purchase these, we invest in these, we're going to have to have staff to service them and, and, or contract that out and to restock them. Who's gonna do that? Oh no, we weren't thinking to hire. We, like we said, wherever we had them at, there would be an MOU in place where we monitor them and we knew when they needed extra things, we got them to them and then they would um, stock the machine. All right. Well, I, I said my piece. I, you know, I just, sure. I, I just think there's a smarter way to approach this and a less expensive way to approach it. As I stated, the, the day we voted on that bill up here, we've been put in a very, uh, you know, we're very lucky to have that opportunity and we shouldn't blow it. And I just, again, I think when I think of bicycles, haircuts and vending machines, I just, uh, I don't know. I said enough. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. I'm, um, so we did have, and I believe I talked about it last time we were here, out a request for application for retail food establishments to submit uh, menu items, which they thought might qualify for um, Heart Health First Indiana is what we are calling it. Um, we did receive two establishments that submitted some menu items, so those are currently under review. Uh, and I had another establishment contact me yesterday to ask if it was too late. It is never too late. <laughs> so um, the two that submitted applications were in Chesterton. Uh, the one that 
contacted me yesterday was in Portage. And of course, we would like to have at least someone in each municipality. So we'll kind of be reaching out. Um, and again, these will be menu items that are designated with the Heart Health First Indiana. And then we hope to promote those, especially for seniors to get together and gather in community. Um, and then we will help the restaurants out with the difference between the regular menu price and the senior discount that they're giving. Um, and in conjunction with that, the at our next meeting, I know that the uh, Purdue Extension is coming to talk with us about some evidence-based programming um, regarding nutrition and exercise, chronic disease prevention, also balance with the senior group to kind of go along with, um, that we can advertise along with this initiative as well. Um, and we have the same um, type of agreement in place with the YMCA and Portage for evidence-based programs up there for chronic disease prevention. Uh, we, the auditor's office has on your agenda today to establish a fund for a new asthma grant that we have received from the state. It's a capacity building grant to begin an asthma program. And this is actually something we've been talking about for a couple years, wanting to get started. And it was definitely something that we wanted to start with HFI. So the grant is for $8,800 from the state, and it's merely to train staff and to um, be able to purchase materials, to be able to put a program in place. But we're excited about the program because it's a joint effort between our nursing and our environmental divisions, much like our lead program, lead and healthy homes program, where when people, they can be referred to us from outside, um, you know, an outs a primary care provider, they can be somebody that we see in the office, they can be somebody who's referred from a trustee's office or one of our other community partners who is struggling with asthma. And so the nurses will meet with them and make sure that they have an asthma control plan, make sure that they have all the supplies that they need to properly control their asthma. And then the environmental division as well will go out into their home to do an assessment for asthma triggers, make recommendations um, as far as that goes to bring the, um, to control the triggers in their home. And so we're really excited. And like I said, this grant is just to build our capacity, get us all ready with our training and our materials so that we can put the program in place. And so we're really excited about that if you have any questions. Would that include, um, what's the other breathing disorder that? COPD? Yeah. This is specifically for asthma. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a grant out there for COPD or not. Um, environment plays such a big role with asthma in terms of allergens and dust and uh, pollution and that kind of thing that. Like um, every other person I know it suffers this time of year. It seems yes. Like. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's the point in mitigating the exposures, if possible, that trigger asthma. Good program. We're excited about it. Right. <laughs> it affects young people quite a bit more, too. So that's the other, um, the other issue. Yeah, and there's asthma component as well with the schools and being in touch with them and making sure, and they all do have asthma plans, but making sure as well that they have all the supplies that they need to help students um, in the best way yeah. as well. So Great. Thank you. Um, we also have, uh, Kendra is with us, she's as our office manager, but she has been trained as a car seat safety specialist. And so we are very excited as well that we can um, provide car seat fittings to families that need that. Uh, and she is currently going through training to become uh, certified to deliver safe sitter branded classes, is it safe, sitter. safe sitter. So they, and they have various different programs. So they have um, a safe at home program for kiddos of certain ages to be home alone. They have the safe sitter for taking care of siblings or others being an actual sitter who gets paid um, and some other programs, some beginner programs and things like that. And so we're excited to be able to offer that those programs as well as part of our trauma and injury prevention. Um, and Kendra's excited to do them. So that's always exciting when you have staff members who are really excited to learn new things and to get additional certifications and to be able to provide those services. Back there smiling, so she must I told her you might ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> that made her sweat. So. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to, um, just a couple things. We do have four proposals coming up at our upcoming meeting. Um, and of course, we have other things going on that we've talked about um, previously at previous meetings, but Purdue Extension is going to be um, 
giving of proposals. We discussed about the evidence-based nutrition and strength and balance programs. We have community health care system or Powers Health coming to talk with us about, we've been working with them for quite a while actually on a diabetes, pre-diabetes diagnosis and education program that of course there will be some um, referral and follow-up to care as needed. Um, the county halfway houses are um, coming to talk with us about um, assistance with drug screenings for um, their intervention as necessary. And also the Porter County Council on Aging, I believe, is um, going to try to get a proposal in that will be heard at our May meeting as well. So those are just some things we have coming up. And then we also are excited to have a meeting scheduled with there's a brand new Masters of Social Work program at Valparaiso University, um, and they currently have a Masters of Clinical Mental Health Counseling. And so we are planning to meet with the directors of those departments to talk about um, having students rotate through our office to offer some counseling services. And this is something we'll, we wouldn't look to have started until next spring. But that's kind of what we're shooting for, um, would be to work with them, hopefully, to get something in place, a program in place by spring of um, 2025, which will be here way before we know it. <laughs> so if you have any questions about are, are we? Is there any plans to use any of the funds from uh, SB4 um, for continuing education for our staff downstairs? So we, as far as, we have lots of training opportunities and we each year put money into training and education and we usually hear requests for anything that we get, we push right along. We encourage people to take any of those trainings that qualifies to what they're doing or what they would like to do. Um, and so that's, always, Sheila was really big on that and that was really important. Um, there's, yeah, there's also, a, and I don't know, it, um, along with Health First Indiana, IU of Bloomington received a grant, a federal grant, to um, offer for anyone working in public health, so local health departments, any other community-based organizations in public health, uh, masters of public health degrees or certificates. And so they put that out last winter. And Jess and I both, we had, you had to apply for the scholarship. So Jess and I both applied for the scholarship and both got the scholarship. And then you had to apply for school. Um, so I'm actually in school right now through IU Bloomington to get my master's of public health administration. But it's completely free. Comes with a computer. Um, the only thing they don't pay for is if you actually need a book. And I've, I've had to buy one so far. Uh, master's of public health administration. They also offer uh, Master's of Public Health in Epidemiology. That's another choice. And then they have a lot of certificate programs um, that you can do. And so it opened again this year for this school year. And I, I know we had several staff members, you know, we sent it out who were interested and they came to me and asked about it. I don't know if they um, went ahead and applied. That would have been due April the 15th and then they'll find out about it soon. But there's that opportunity. But absolutely, we really encourage anyone to good good yeah and if it falls under hfi under the core services guidelines we will use some training money for that also for instance the car seat and the safe sitter mm -hmm. training will fall under hfi in terms of uh, maternal child health and safety have you gotten any anything from what was sb1 which was the mental health legislation that passed does that anything flow to you from that, or is that all from the state in there? Yeah, it stayed at the state level, and it's my understanding. I don't know if it has to be requested. I believe that their first priority was to ensure that each county or by county or tri county had a Porter Stark, oh, you know, service in there. And then I, but I do know that I've hear, heard people say that you could request it for specific needs. Now, I, when SB4 originally passed Health First Indiana, they talked a lot about. There was SB1 and there was SB4, right. kind of how everything was siloed. Right. At the last meeting that we went to, they talked directly to us about funding um, about funding mental health in different ways. So I, they are loosening that up, and we think that that's amazing. <laughs> so we, you know, instantly at that meeting reached out right away as soon as we got home um, to Valparaiso University, as I said. Mm -hmm. um, we're just trying to brainstorm, you know, the lack of providers – is the, is the huge issue there. And that's something that providing providers isn't something that we're able to do. So we're just trying to figure out how we can best serve in that space. So 
any ideas as well. Yeah. We're open. <laughs> I'm glad to see that they're loosening that up. Yes. Yeah. So any other questions? Yeah. Unless you have other questions or. No, just uh, again, I, I think you're doing a wonderful job downstairs. Keep it up. Thank you. But with any organization, when there's a lot of decisions being made, especially if there there's a lot of money involved, you're going to have hiccups. Mm -hmm. You, you got to watch for those because you'll have guys like me <laughs> asking questions. <laughs> That's your job, right? That's my job. <laughs> and we've got a board and we're not making decisions alone. So we're <laughs> and sometimes when you get a lot of money, you just feel like you have to spend it, you know, and it, you just want to make sure. Yeah. And we were aware of that. We were just talking about that. And, you know, they want to see us appropriate at all so that we have ideas, but that's not, and you know, even if, as far as on the state level, you know, they want to see what our plans are for the whole the whole pot, but especially is, you know, it's taking a while to get things up and going, right? Because you have the, the approval and then the 30 day posting and then the agreements that you've got to iron out through everything. And so we know that even though, you know, dollars time wise, there are things that haven't even begun because of getting everything in order and doing it right. And we might absolutely have to pivot and we're, mm -hmm. I, we know you're working hard. It's just, you know, you're going to make some decisions not everybody's going to agree with. And that's what my statements were this morning. It's just I want you to maybe go into the back door of whatever you're trying to get into and, and look at it at a different uh, angle. So, um, but you're doing a good job. Just, you know, don't, don't let what I said rattle you. <laughs> just keep well, thank you. We appreciate you. All righty. Thank you. Thanks, commissioners. West Porter Township Fire Protection District Board Appointment. You ready for a nomination? Yes, ma'am, I am. I would like to nominate Carrie Lucas to the board. We have a motion for Carrie Lucas. I will second that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Now, I'm going to very quickly, uh, Carrie was on the board earlier, and those who have been paying close attention, uh, she was taken off the board or replaced on the board. Um, I have since had a long conversations, uh, conversation with Carrie. Uh, I think it's important, uh, given her experience on the board and her, and her background in, in, in numbers, uh, that it's, it was important to have somebody with that type, that particular type of background to be appointed at this time. Because, folks, what this is all coming down to is, uh, and the, the more I, I, look, I look into it, the more uh, information is brought to the Board of Commissioners is, is the cost of what that territory is going to be once it's uh, created. And everybody needs to understand, it, it needs to be crystal clear on what that, those costs are and why they are the way they are. And I think, I think uh, Carrie can help deliver that message um, if we are to move forward with the, with the territory, but I didn't want that message to be lost. Uh, um, I mean, w when we had the vote or when they had the vote a month ago, uh, there, was, there was only 60 people that showed up at that meeting. And there's over, you know, there's over, I think that territory represents over 6,000 people. And uh, we were talking about going from, a, at least on the Porter County side, going from a a, a current fee of uh, approximately on average 170 a year to 800 a year now that's I know that's not all the all the money in the world to a lot of people but it is a lot of money uh, to a, a lot of other people and those are the people I'm most concerned with um, and I think that and I let the district uh, the fire district know that if they needed resources to get this information out to to the uh, to the residents uh, that this will affect um, to, to approach us. Maybe we can help them um, uh, with some resources to get that information, but they deserve to be told. Um, and when you're voting on something like that and only 60 people show up, that tells me um, in my many years of experience up here is that uh, most people didn't know. So, or at least most people didn't know the details. So. Anyway, 
we're we're going to we're going to continue to move forward with that. Um, I I think that uh, I think this is a positive thing, and I look forward to uh, to what Kerry brings uh, will bring to the board, and I look forward to uh, continuing um, open dialogue with the uh, fire district. Okay, with that, uh, we have an amended ARPA ordinance second reading. Uh, is this? Uh, Do we need to recap hearing? it? We don't. We, you can recap it. It's on second reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a, a motion will suffice. Yeah. Um, basically, we're doing a little over a hundred thousand uh, dollars for facilities projects. One of them being the JDC cooler. The other being the um, coil for the HVAC on the courthouse roof, and then we've got about. 32,000 some dollars for the uh, Marquette slash Kelly Trail five and six. And I move that we approve the amended ARPA ordinance on second reading. Second, we have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. <coughs> Thank you. We have an approval for an encroachment into the public alley be, uh, between the city of Valparaiso through its board of public works and safety and the Port of County Commissioners pertaining to the Memorial Opera House project. What do, what do we need to do here, Scott? We need to approve this also. So this would be part of the uh, addition that the Opera House are going into the public alleyway. So the city board, the Valparaiso Board of Works and are aware of where those encroachments are in the public alley and they have approved them. Uh, this, uh, this encroachment agreement basically lays out that for some reason in the future we need, they need to be in that public alley if there's some emergency basis that we're going to be mm -hmm. responsible for whatever our stuff is in that public mm -hmm. but this is the board of works of Valparaiso uh, acknowledging and approving the encroachments and then us approving uh, the understanding of uh, whose okay. responsibility that they are within that public okay. alleyway that the city of Valparaiso. Okay, I move that we approve the encroachment agreement with the city of Valparaiso for the Memorial Opera House project. Uh, second, we have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Uh, Skillman. <laughs> we have our updates on the Memorial Opera House project, the highway uh, garage uh, project in the jail. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Super. Good. Super. You want so, to start with the Memorial Opera House? Yeah, quick, some quick updates on the Memorial Opera House. Uh, we've received all our building permits and everything for um, the city of Valparaiso to start construction. Uh, right now, we are in the incoming couple of weeks starting construction the week of May 13th, uh, coordinating with contractors to bring all the materials, dumpsters, equipment on site to start construction after the last show, which is on May 12th. Um, and in the meantime, we're coordinating, coordinating carefully with staff on site for cleaning out the areas, preparing the areas of construction so that we can start right away on uh, May 13th. Um, we're just really excited to get started and um, just get things moving. One of the things we're also moving to, I asked if we could move to a weekly status yeah. instead of an every other week status since we're now actually in the project. We just want to make sure that everybody is well aware of where things are and Absolutely. if there's any any little gotchas that... Well, we and it, especially at this point, it's yeah. we're only a couple weeks out, so just making sure that everything, yep. eyes are dotted, T's yep. are crossed, making sure that we're yep. ready to go get started right away. And Joe, I want to thank you because you have provided some plastic tubs for them to actually get started, and should we have a whole bunch of bankers boxes available, we're going to be able to provide them with boxes, and I'll let you comment on that as well. Yeah, so we, we worked with staff there um, to kind of coordinate the the temporary uh, move of that. Um, one of your next action items um, is to approve the lease agreement um, for the temporary uh, relocation of those items so that way um, they can get the project started on time. So um, once they're completed with their uh, final show, that'll the mobilization of that will, will begin and they will be begin moving the items out of their, their way so they can get started on the project. And Jim, we're starting with two 10 by 20 storage units, and they also are reserving two additional ones should we need them. We also have the ability to move items into the three dressing rooms, but 
we're trying to get as much stuff out of there prior to their show, so we might need that additional space. And we're just not sure. They have a lot of stuff there, and everybody underestimates how much stuff they have um, when, when they need to move. So I am going to move that we approve the contract for temporary storage in the amount of $128 a month with two in Evans storage. And we're intending for this to run May, the beginning of May through the end of September. Where, is, where, where have you targeted where this money will come from? Oh, this is going to come from the project. Mm -hmm. From the project? Project, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that was your motion. Yeah. Second. All those, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. And uh, uh, Joe, real quick, uh, uh, when you get to time, uh, not today because she, she's under the weather, but reach out to Commissioner Blaney and let her know what we did today. Yeah, we'll do. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. I'll, I'll send a follow-up memo to the commissioner. Okay. Right. Thank you. Highway Department. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, quick update on the highway department. Uh, we've began demo demolition on the salt barn and the um, signage shop. Big thank you to Jim Polaric and the highway department who completed that work. I didn't see him doing anything. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I think he did have the first swing at it. But uh, they did an excellent job. It's going to save the project quite a bit of money here by them completing that work by themselves. Okay. Um, you know, so they, they completed the salt barn and the uh, signage shop. Down the road, they'll do the building when that time comes for the time being standalone. Um, as far as design, uh, we received our final design drawings from A&Z on Friday last week. Skillman's working through the final design estimate here, so things are moving in the right direction. We hope to advertise for bid here in the next couple weeks or next month. Uh, on the agenda, we have a target milestones that we're trying to hit. Um, they're not set in stone right now, but we are working through every odds and ends, just trying to get things completed and wrapped up to get us moving in the right direction. Did you put your eyeballs on the final design drawings? I did. How do they look? They look great. Okay, good. They're in our estimator's hands. He hasn't asked any questions for three days, so that's a good sign. We could put new cardboard boxes out there and look better than what was there. <laughs> but uh, uh, seriously, Jim, uh, great job with your people. I drove by there after they were done. They cleaned up really nice. Uh, very, very good job. You guys can all, always uh, moonlight and do that on the side for some extra money. <laughs> but, you, but you guys did an excellent job cleaning that up. Yep. And... Um, you're going to the jail next? Yes. But just, uh, you know, great job on the Memorial Opera House in the jail uh, or at the garage. I know the jail is going to be this, it's going to be like a mini series here with this with this jail, but uh, so far so good. Every, you know, everybody that's been involved in those projects, it's just, we, you know, knock on wood, we haven't really hit a wall yet. So, yep. and I think that's because you guys, it's hard work. So, Thank anyway, you. go to jail. Yep. So, on the uh, jail, we'll go through project one, which is the re-roof. Um, on project one, we're expecting final design drawings on May 3rd, uh, which our estimators will review. We've already received design development drawings there. Um, everything's moving in the right direction there. We should be able to advertise for bid here next month. That's our target date. Um, this is for the re-roof portion. Um, there shouldn't be any issues here. So next month? Advertise for bid next month. We're, we're going to be really busy next month. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so we're hoping to advertise for bid next month. Um, no hiccups here. We're going to get the final designs here next week and uh, start estimating those and should be able to move forward there. And Commissioner Biggs, one thing, um, in terms of opening the bids, we may just have a separate meeting to do that if we want to, if we have the ability to do that just so that we can move the project forward. Yeah, and the, one of the reasonings for that is there's going to, we're hoping to get 50, 60 bids, and it's going to be pretty intense. So, oh, really? Um, yeah. You know, for every jail, for the highway department, for the jail, it might be one bid. But if we're doing it all on the same day, we might. There's going to be a lot of things yeah. open, so we may want to do that in a separate. I agree, Barb. Okay. I think that's a, a separate meeting, special meeting for that. Yep. Mm. Good point. Uh, project number two, which is. Um, Completed the, uh, completed the schematic design uh, with DLZ. We're hoping to move forward here with design development. Um, we've g gone through our top priorities with the jail staff and uh, Barb and Scott and 
Everybody's reviewed the priority, so we'd like to move forward with design development for project number two. Uh, this will keep DLC moving forward and we won't have any hiccups as far as delays for design. Uh, this will also allow us to put together a better estimate uh, in regards to project number two and have a better number to be able to incorporate as much as possible in project number two. Yeah. And what portion of project two are we have we authorized DLC to move forward on? So we've completed schematic design and right now we are on hold. We'd like to move forward with design de design development. But we have limited that down to um, Scott. We weren't going to do the entire project. What have we? What did we well, limit? We're, the we're thinking the entire project. You got the mechanical, electrical, and some of these other items uh, to move forward with that design development allows us to better price out okay. things. We're okay. looking really to get the whole thing going. Okay. Design. And mm -hmm. I think we're going to ask for authorization to do that. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. So we'd like to uh, authorize DLZ to move forward with design development for the project number two at the Porter County Jail. Does that take a motion, Scott? It does. Okay. I move that we approve that DLZ move forward on project two design. Uh, second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Is that it? That's it. That's all right. I'm just wondering, you know, you two doing all the heavy lifting now. What's he just arm candy? That's basically <laughs> it. You see the way he's leaning over there, so he goes up for his face. Up. Yeah. Let's be nice. All right. Thank you, guys. Gentlemen. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Health Department Corner of Veterans and Admin Space Renovation. Well, Joe's coming up, and uh, we figured that now is the time to get this on our commissioner's schedule also in a similar format to what uh, Skillman has been presenting. Two things that kind of put us back on this project is we had a shortfall in funding, and it took us about a month to get back on track and to find that additional funding, which Carrie Gushwin was able to successfully find. And the other thing that we were worried about was the general election and that conference room downstairs being out of commission for a month. And so we have essentially pushed back the schedule such that we don't have to stop anything. We're going to be able to just move forward. So Joe, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. So thank you. Good morning. Um, I want to take this time to kind of recap our administrative building renovation project. Um, it's going to take about a 15 month uh, time frame from beginning to end. Um, the project is obviously a culmination of many uh, months of design and preparation uh, to give our health uh, veterans and our coroner's department uh, much better facilities to serve the needs of the Porter County residents for many years to come. Um, this project site consists of about 9,751 square feet of the lower level of this building. Um, today we're seeking direction to approve this project to go out to bid uh, we would expect this project uh, will be advertised for bid on the 23rd of May and the 30th of May. Um, we will be holding a pre-bid meeting the week of June 3rd. Um, we look forward to opening bids on June 18th. Um, we will review the bids um, that are submitted with our design consultant and have recommendations to the commissioners before awarding the bids at the July 16th meeting. Uh, we expect phase one construction um, on the old voters uh, location to begin in August, on August 5th. Um, this phase is expected to take about 17 weeks. Um, this phase consists of construction of new facilities for veterans and the coroner's office. Phase one should be completed by the end of November of this year. Um, on December 1st, our large conference room, like Commissioner um, was just talking about, will be out of use until the end of the phase three. Um, upon completion of the veterans and coroner's new office space, we will relocate them um, to those facilities while our health department will be vacating their current office space to allow for phase one, phase two to start. Phase two is scheduled to start on December 9th, and this is expected to take, again, about 17 weeks to complete. Um, this, this would put us at about April 4th of 2025, um, to complete that second phase. Um, as we begin phase three on April 14th of 2025, I'm like, the years are throwing me. Um, we expect that, again, to take 17 weeks. Phase three construction uh, will be complete August 8th of 2025. Um, we'll wrap 
up by the end of August of next year on the whole project. And so phase one is, is preparing old voters, old voters registration for the coroner's office and veterans administration. Phase two is doing the health side of the health department. Phase three is doing the non-health part of the health department, which is foods and all the other. Which is what? Foods and all the other um, functions that they, they have. Um, this is, we're gonna be giving updates to the county employees because this is gonna be in this building in the lower level and it is gonna be disruptive. It's gonna be very disruptive to the people in the health department. And so we're really gonna to have to ask for people's indulgences in, because um, this is going from, it's starting in August and it's going through August, so it's yeah. gonna be like a year. And we've been working with the consultant on this as far as getting the logistics worked out for contractors, entrance and exit uses and stuff like that, so. Um, and the other thing I've asked Joe is because that conference room is gonna be out of commission for so long, he is going to be looking for alternatives and working with Lee to get those posted uh, so that people will have some alternatives in terms of a conference room. Well, thank you. Um, do we need to vote on anything today? I, I was thinking, do we need to vote to send this out to bid or to get this prepared to send out to bid? We have to vote to authorize the bid. Okay, okay I move that we authorize the bidding process for the health department slash coroner slash veterans administration space renovation. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Commissioners, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Auditor Karen Martin, uh, Westchester Township ARPA agreement. I'd like to see Susan. You would, you, you want to come up? You want to come forward? Susan Philbrick, Westchester Township trustee. One of the best in the county, by the way. She's the cutest of them all, right? Oh. I wasn't expecting to, to <laughs> but you. Uh, Karen, do you want to add anything? Police submitted their contract for the ARPA monies, and this is where we're standing right now to have it approved by the commissioner. And you approve everything that you've seen? Yes. Okay. So I just need a, a motion to... I move that we approve the Westchester Township ARPA agreement. I second that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. An ordinance establishing a non-reverting fund, 8921, for the comprehensive public health approach to asthma grant. <coughs> First reading. Oh, I hate these. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, I, I will have to close the commissioner's meeting and, and open up the public meeting. I will start out by asking three different times uh, those in favor uh, of supporting uh, the grant. Um, did you want to explain it real quick? We have Karen explain it real quick, just so that people know what they're voting for or voting against. It's a, it's a grant that we've got from the state for the comprehensive, comprehensive health approach to asthma grant that's to pay for uh, a plan that the state has required us to do to pay for the plan. So this is the money comes in, we have to follow the asthma. Uh, is this the one the health department was just talking about? Okay. Yes. Right. You good? <laughs> Um, and then I'll ask three times for anybody who would like to uh, speak against uh, the ordinance. So I will close the commissioner's meeting, open up the public meeting. Um, I'll start with anyone like to speak in favor of this ordinance? Step forward. Second call, anybody would like to speak in favor of this ordinance? Please step forward. Third and final call, anyone who would like to speak in favor of this ordinance, please step forward. Anyone who would like to speak against this ordinance, please step forward. Second call, anyone who would like to speak against this ordinance, please step forward. Third and final call, anyone who would like to speak against this ordinance, please step forward. Seeing none, 
<clears throat> excuse me, I will close the public uh, uh, session and open up uh, back up to the commissioner's um, meeting. I move that we approve the ordinance establishing non-reverting fund 8921 for the comprehensive public health approach to asthma grant on first reading. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. My timing this entire meeting has been off because Laura's yeah. not here. I mean, Laura never misses a meeting, so it's like having that open, it's just odd. Anyway, so we're good there. Okay, uh, Clerk, uh, Jessica Bailey, is she here? I don't don't see her. Uh, we have an ordinance for um, for the 2023 HOVA uh, HOVA grant, second reading. Uh, and this was for the grant. Explain what that is. This was sort of the election supply grant. So this will, as the election arm of the clerk's office, to purchase things for the upcoming election. This would is uh, re reimburses them for the supplies for that. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the ordinance for the 2023 Hover Grant on second reading. Uh, I will second that. We have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Uh, IT, Lee Childress. Supporting a brand new haircut, too. Yeah. Like yeah. the year if I need it or not. How are you? Well, yourself. Good. You got the Adams Remco and copier purchase agreement for the Porter County Assessor's Office, the amount of $5,125. You briefly explain? Uh, their copier is five and a half years old. It was purchased at a time when their copier needs weren't as high as they are now. It's a real slow machine. So they're searching for a newer, faster copier. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the copier purchase agreement for the assessor's office in the amount of $5,125 with Adams Remco. Uh, second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Uh, probably could have done these two together. Adams Remco, one year copier maintenance agreement for the Porter County Assessor's Office. The assessor will be covering the cost. Correct. They'll cover the cost. I move that we approve the one-year copy or maintenance agreement for the assessor's office with Adams Remco. I'll second that. Uh, we have a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. And the BIS Digital, a proposal to upgrade audio equipment for all of the Porter County government court courtrooms uh, person, uh, pursuant to Indiana Trial Rule 74 in the amount of 404000 $842.03. Trial Rule 74 was enacted, which pretty much says all the courtrooms have to be able to supply adequate recordings to uh, anybody who asks for them, not just, you know, barely here. It's got to be decent equipment. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to cover this with ARPA funding. And at our next meeting, I'm hoping that we'll have a first reading of a revised ARPA ordinance to cover that. And the reason that we did it at this timing is if we didn't vote on this today, the prices are going prices up. Prices are going to go back up. Forever state mandates. Yes. <laughs> Unfunded. Taxes in half of the state would just keep their nose out of our business. <laughs> anyway. Well, we got to do it. Um, I move that we approve the proposal to upgrade audio equipment for all the Porter County government courtroom courtrooms in the amount of $404,842.03 with BIS Digital. I'll second that motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. And this equipment is being put in mind that expansion is easy, it's plug and play. So if they want to add video down the road or something, you're not buying all new equipment. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so we're, we're not having to purchase all at one time. Correct. Just come in and plug it in. And That's correct. Have the money. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Lee. Development stormwater management, uh, Mike Jabo. Director Mike Jabo. Take your time. We're here. We're all set up. Oh. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, how are you, Michael? I do well. I know. We have an approval of plans for bridge uh, 1016 Midwest Still Highway over US 12 EBWB, whatever that means, NICD, and Norfolk Southern Railroad. 
As the project will be going out to bid shortly, we need the commissioner's signature on the plan indicating that you approve the project. We have reviewed the plans and we find them satisfactory. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the plans for bridge 1016 Midwest Steel Highway over US 12 EB slash WB Nick D and Norfolk Southern Railroad. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. After the, the meeting, if you could stay around, the sheet will be here for you to sign. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Linco Equipment sells a request to purchase a 2024 Mack truck in the amount of $160,526.78, which will be paid for from the Development and Stormwater Management Department's Motor Vehicle Fund. Uh, correction to this, this is not the entire truck. The chassis was something separate. This was a, uh, as you know, during the COVID and after that, put orders in for equipment like this. It takes a year or two to get, so this was done some time ago. Uh, for $160,000, we are not getting a whole truck? No, there's another bill for the truck. <laughs> and I'm getting to the bottom kind of, of the time. This, this was done before my time, so uh, with Jim Cleric's help and some of the staff's help, we're finally wading through all this. But uh, What would this truck be used for? This is going to be used by the bridge crew and other for holding large materials to the okay. job site so we can self-perform our own work. I'll entertain them. Man, this is the longest invoice I've they, Every nut and bolt is on here. <laughs> I move that we... She'll uh, read them, too. Read every page. <laughs> I move that we approve the purchase of the 2024 Mack truck in the amount of $160,526.78. Correction, it's just the outfitting of the Mack truck. Okay. Can I cancel that and start over? Sure. I move that we approve the outfitting of the 2024 Mack truck in the amount of $160,526.78 from Linco Equipment Sales. Thank you. I will second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion approved. And if the pleasure of the commissioners, I got three announcements I'd like to make yes, to sir. you. First of all, uh, the meeting this morning, the Stormwater Board, Management Board, Carriage Hill Subdivision will be under construction soon, a long needed project. Uh, Mike, can you pull that mic a little bit closer? On May 1st. You getting this, Shelly? All right. On May 1st, for the benefit of the residents that are adjacent to the project or in the project, there'll be a meeting at Shetland Drive at 5.30 p.m. And then plus or minus, probably plus, May 6th, on that date or thereafter, the project will start. Um, the other is the Community Crossings Matching Grant Fund. You all knew that uh, Porter County was a recipient of 1.5 million bucks, so we're very excited as the highway department is. Another one is the individual solar panel requirements uh, revision to the UDO. Last year, you voided what was the solar pan solar uh, requirements. Uh, by doing so, it also removed an individual property owner or an individual business to do it. So we're in the process. We're going to re-examine that for just individual owners, individual businesses, keeping in mind the aesthetics and it's, uh, uh, you know, we don't want something unsightly or anything else like that. So we'll come back at you after we do more research. Mike, Mike had called me last week about this. You know, it was never, it was never the commissioner's intentions to take that to take that portion of, of the of the so-called solar ordinance uh, and throw it out with the, the bath water so to speak um, you know I, I I think we all feel that solar uh, has a role uh, in residential or even business um, our issue here in this county <clears throat> at least with these uh, uh, the current commissioner setting up here right now was was uh, eating up you know, hundreds of acres of, far, of uh, productive farmland for solar farms. And, but, um, yeah, I look forward to this. I think it's smart uh, to do. We want to spend some time with it and get it right and get some input from people, and yeah. we'll come back at you sometime. Okay. And lastly, you know, I sent you a memo on space needs. Is If anyone's visited our office, we're all stacked on top of each other. We have no place for storage. And I realize, you know, we'll have to consult with, 
Karen and other people about re re retainage of records. Um, I know some are almost forever. Some in dot records, you got to keep three to five years, et cetera, like that. So I know some housekeeping and record winnowing is in order, but still the fact remains uh, we're just stacked up on top of each other in there with no storage. So, um, Yeah, I, I, I look forward to of, of receiving additional information on that. I mean, it's obvious walking through your department how stacked up you are on, e on each other. Um, but we're going to have to find some kind of solution for that. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea to work with our facilities director on that too. Certainly. So that jointly you can come up with some recommendations. Appreciate that. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Unless you have any other questions? No, sir. Thank you. We have the uh, Porter Masonic Lodge number one thirty-seven, John Miller. Morning, John. Morning. We have a request for permission to use the north side of the courthouse grounds on Saturday, May 11th, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to sell Vidalia onion. onions on behalf of the shrines with a backup rain date of Saturday, May 18th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I'll take a, I'll take a sec, so when you, they come in. Okay, well, thank you. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we allow the Porter Masonic Lodge number 137 use of the north side of the courthouse grounds on Saturday, May 11th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. to sell the Dahlia onions on behalf of the Shriners with a backup rain date of Saturday, May 18th from 9 to 3 p.m. Um, second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. See, I was thrown off again. <laughs> Killing me. Uh, those opposed, same sign motion approved how much are they a bag this year still ten dollars god bless them i know everything going up but there's only two onions in it though jim <laughs> no <laughs> yeah but they're this big <laughs> well teasing i'm teasing yeah they're yeah um, we should be getting i'll be getting some sooner than that so you know if anybody yeah, just bring them over and i'll, I'll get well, you I appreciate you've always been great commissioner regnitz has been so um thank you very much for the approval. Thank you, John. Deeply appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Uh, any other matter which may properly come before the Board of Commissioners? Uh, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to recess. I'm, I move that we adjourn. Uh, second. We're adjourned.